Home Assistant's February. One moment, please. Home Assistant's February release for 2023 is here, and this month includes lots of new features to assist you in building your smart home even better than before, including new ways to group sensors, live graph updates, many new integrations, and of course, lots of new things to play around with when it comes to voice. So as we know, this year is Home Assistant's Year of the Voice, which means that their overall mission and focus for this year is to deliver a good voice experience using Home Assistant. That means using your voice to control your smart home, much in the way that you can do with Google Home or Amazon or Siri, but done with a focus on local control and privacy. The January update had one or two small voice related features, but nothing huge. But this month there is lots to talk about when it comes to voice. First up, we have what the team calls Assist. Assist is essentially what I would describe as the framework for starting to interact with Home Assistant using your own natural language, be that through voice or through text. You can see the first sort of glimpses of Assist on your dashboard actually. If you hit this little speech icon in the top right hand corner, you can then start typing commands to Home Assistant, which it can then act on. You'll need to be quite direct with the commands to get them to work and it only supports basic stuff currently, but again, it's only the second release of the year. So I'm sure this is gonna be expanded on as we get through the months. I kind of wish they'd chosen a different name, at least for me personally. Home Assistant Assist doesn't really roll off the tongue and I think it might get a little bit confusing for people, but maybe they wanted to keep it a little bit more generic currently and we will see in the future, who knows. You're probably wondering, okay, that's text. What does that have to do with voice? Well, like I mentioned, this is more of a framework currently to allow it to support voice. And a big part of getting voice to work after you have converted the speech to text is to process that text and turn it into an action. And that is what you can see happening with Assist here. If you were a user of the conversation integration, then some of this may look familiar to you already. The other cool thing about Assist is how many languages currently have support for it after such a short amount of time. With support for these basic commands completed in 39 languages currently with more underway. Home Assistant is relying heavily on the community to help out with the translations. So if you want to help out and make sure your language is supported, you can put yourself forward to be a language leader or you can help in other ways with translations. Now we get onto some of the fun demos and features that do use voice. Paulus and Mike, who was brought onto the Nabucasa team this year to drive the voice stuff forward, hosted a live stream last week where they showed off the ways that you can now use Assist with your voice, with the first one being on your smartwatch. On the Android side, there is a new tile that will allow you to access Assist and use the text-to-speech engine built into Android to send voice commands to Home Assistant which will in turn then process the command and take action. Now there is still some manual intervention required it looks like as you need to hit the send button, but if you watch the speed between hitting the send command and the action being taken on screen on Home Assistant, it does look very snappy. So not a truly hands-free experience just yet, but hopefully this will allow more people to start using it and then start providing feedback, which will then drive further features. On the Apple side, the team has managed to integrate with Siri through Apple Shortcuts, which does provide a hands-free experience and allows you to control devices directly by activating Siri, then saying assist, and then issuing the command, which will in turn control the device. It's worth noting that both of these are currently available inside of the Android beta and the iOS beta respectively. So if you want to try them out, you will need to be on those channels, but they should be included in the next main release of the app. Another feature of Assist is the ability to change voice engines if you want to. So currently the default is to be powered by Home Assistant voice engine, but as they've mentioned previously, they are focusing on controlling devices for now and not on other things that you might want to ask a voice assistant, which is why you might want to change to a different engine. In this release, they currently have added support for Google Assistant and OpenAI GPT-3, which can be switched in between. And as Paulus shows in, off in his demo, this technically means that you can hear responses from Google Assistant through an Apple HomePod, like some sort of weird love child. How can I assist? Who made you? 
I was made by a team of people at Google. Finally, there is also support for custom sentences on Assist so that you can add your own weird and wonderful phrases to allow you to control your home however you want. They aren't the easiest thing to add, particularly if you are a beginner, but hopefully we will see some big improvements over how this is handled in the future, and it's nice to have the ability to do so anyways. They did also mention that in the future they want to make sentences shareable, kind of like how automations are with blueprints, so that you can easily import other user sentences, which I do think is a really nice idea. Okay, so I think that's all of the voice stuff for this release. If you want even more of the nitty gritty details, then go and check out that live stream they did last week, which had tons of good information in it. But let's check out some of the other features in 2023.2, because that was just the voice stuff. So next up, we finally have sensor groups. So allowing us to take a bunch of sensors that are the same or similar and group them all into one entity. You can do this by heading over to helpers and settings, devices, and then helpers and creating a new group. I could see this being really useful for keeping track of loads of different sensors, like the average temperature from different rooms, maximum humidity, average power consumption, battery levels, and so on. This is a really neat addition. Another small but nice addition is that when you are viewing history graphs of sensors, they are now updated in real time, which can be very useful for debugging. I think previously it was mentioned that they used to pull the graph changes every 60 seconds before, but now graphs will update in real time as you are looking at them. This has also allowed for less writing to the database, which in turn should preserve storage lifetimes, especially important if you are still using an SD card. And as always, we welcome any and all performance improvements. Sensors also now support changing the precision value, meaning you can set that according to your preferences. This is really useful, for example, if you have a sensor that gives you a value with like five digits after the decimal point and it looks really messy on your dashboard and you really don't care about that level of accuracy, then this will allow you to change it. Previously, you could probably do this with a template sensor, but now this is just a quick change in the UI to set it. This also doesn't just affect the way it's displayed on the dashboard, but actually changes the state of the entity so that it will be reflected in things like the history page, automations, scripts, database, and so on. We also see an even tighter integration with ESB Home this release too. Firstly, friendly names are going to work better in Home Assistant with the new release, making your ESB Home devices and entities look better when you set them up. Also, when you set up a new device in Home Assistant and then add it to Home Assistant, they should now be able to exchange encryption keys automatically, which will save the hassle of copy pasting like you sometimes had to do before, which is a much nicer user experience. Finally, you can now update the firmware of ESP Home devices directly through the update section in Home Assistant. When I saw this, I was kind of like, wait, isn't that already a thing? I just kind of thought it already existed for some reason since it seems so obvious, but no, apparently it wasn't. So that is really cool to see that too. Actually looking forward to some of these new ESP Home changes as they should be a nice little update for EP1 owners and make things just a little bit nicer, you know? I know some of you will ask, but as far as I'm aware, these new features are only available through Home Assistant OS with the ESP Home add-on and won't work if you use separate containers. As far as I understand, it needs to leverage some features of OS so that's why it only works in HAOS, just so you are aware. And finally, in a previous release, we saw support for aliases for entities, which allows you to add alternate names for devices for use with multiple languages. Well, this release also adds support for aliases in areas too, which again will be useful for voice assistants. For example, if you want to say, turn off all the lights in the kitchen, now you can add an alias for the word kitchen. Nice. As for the little things this month, we have quite a few. Firstly, the real link integration now supports FLV streams, auto discovery and binary sensors, meaning it can now support things like motion, vehicle detection and doorbell presses. There is also a new service for creating calendar events, which could be useful in your automations. You can now change the units of energy for sensors that gives readings in watt hours to kilowatt hours and the most important integration there is, the Oral-B integration now supports battery states, which might actually be useful. 
As for new integrations this month, there is 13 new integrations, including one I'm really excited about, which is called Everything But The Kitchen Sink, which is basically, despite the name, allows you to start automating any kitchen sink in the world to see how many dishes are in there, and then you can start sending notifications. No, I'm just kidding, it's, that, that would be nice, but it's not in here, not yet. There is also three integrations now available to set up via the UI instead of in YAML. And in terms of breaking changes this month, there is a few more this month than we've had in previous months. Most of them don't look like anything to worry about from what I've seen, unless you're running Home Assistant Core, which is only a small number of you, then you need to make sure that you're using Python 3.10 as support for 3.9 has now been removed. Home Assistant OS, supervised and container installs you don't need to worry about this. And other than that, I don't see anything major, but please make sure to double check the breaking changes for yourself before updating. And that is about it for this month, a huge release, particularly around the voice stuff. My favorite new feature from this month, aside from all of the voice features, is probably the ESP Home Editions, just for purely selfish reasons. But I actually like the grouping of sensors in the UI too. I think that is a small but really handy little feature. But let me know your favorite new feature down in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Hmm. What's happening? What's happening to my voice? My sultry tones. Mission for this year is to look meaning it <coughs> there is a new tile that will allow la 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 la